Hey guys, we're going to work on the surface area of prisms and pyramids. If you have your packet, it's page 9. It's a CUDA worksheet. So um, we're going to be doing a couple questions on here. I'll be doing the work on a separate piece of paper because I can write bigger. But we're going to start off with number 8. We've got a pyramid with a, um, a rectangular base. And you've got triangular sides that come to the top. So let's take a look. I'm going to move this toward the top. And let's get working. So one of the things you will notice is, well, let's start off with the easy part. This is number eight. And we've got a rectangular base. So our rectangular base has the dimensions four by three. And because we're finding surface area, we're finding the area of all of the outside. So four by three, the surface area of a, or sorry, the area of a rectangle can be found with base times height. The base is four, the height is three. You multiply those two when you get 12. So that's not the answer. We still have to find the sides, which are triangles. Now, uh, because we have a, a rectangular base, that means we're gonna have four different triangles. Be careful though, it's not four of the same triangles. You actually have two triangles. Well, if we look at this, if we think about it this way, this base, you're gonna have two triangles with a base of three one over here, one over here. And you're gonna have two triangles with a base of four. So you're actually gonna have two different kinds of triangles, four tri triangles total, but two different kinds. So um, I'm gonna do one kind of triangle. I'll do it in blue with a base of three. So we have one kind of triangle with a base of three and we're gonna have two of them. And then we're going to have two other triangles. And they're going to have a base of four. All right, so what am I talking about here? Take a look. If you look at these front and tri the triangle in the front right here, it's got a base of four and it's got a height of 3.4. If you look behind it, it's also got a base of four and it should have the same height, which it does. The triangles on the side right here have a base of three and have a height of 3.6. So for these side triangles, you've got a height of 3.6. I don't actually really need to write it all over. And for this front and back triangle, it's got a height of 3.4. Anyhow, area of a triangle can be found using the formula, base times height divided by two. Now, my base, of this triangle is three. My height is 3.6. You're gonna divide that by two. And because you have two of them, you actually are gonna end up multiplying it by two. Now, some of the sharper students will figure out, wait a minute, if you have something divided by two and multiplying by two, do you really have to divide by two then multiply by two? Don't they cancel each other out? Yeah. Technically, they do cancel each other out if you put it in your calculator. So let's go ahead and work this out first. 3 times 3.6. Put that in your calculator. If you multiply that out, you'll get 10.8 over 2. So I got 10.8 over 2. So if I divide 10.8 by 2, you should get 5.4. But then you have to multiply by 2 because there are two triangles. So this triangle has an area of 5.4, but this triangle also has an area of 5.4. So rather than like just, you know, having to add those up later, just multiply that by two, multiply it by two so that you can get the area of both triangles. So um, the area of both triangles is just 10.8, which is, as you can see, the division and the multiplication can cancel each other out. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna say 10.8. Is the, blue, is the two blue triangles. The two red triangles, you've got a base of four. Again, we're using our triangle formula. Base is four. Our height is 3.4. And we're gonna divide by two, but then we're gonna multiply by two. So really, you can just cancel that step. So four times 3.4. And if you don't trust me, you'll get 13.6 which you divide by two, and then you multiply by two. So kind of a extra step. Anyhow, we've got the area of a base, 
the area of the two side triangles, so the two triangles on the side, and then the two triangles on the front and the back, which is 13.6. So what we do is we need to add them together. So 12 plus 10.8 plus 13.6 is gonna get us an area of 36.4. 36.4, and what is our units? Our units are centimeters. So it's gonna be 36.4 centimeters squared. That's gonna be our answer for number eight. All right, go ahead and grab your second page. Uh, number 10, we're actually gonna be working um, uh, on four different, no, six different problems. Woohoo! lucky for you. So we're gonna do 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So let's go ahead and get started on those. So let's go with 14. 14 is a prism. What kind of prism? Well, it's got triangles for bases and it's connected by rectangles. So 14 is called a triangular prism. Let's go ahead and get started with it. Triangular prism. So let's see what we've got. We've got two triangles the bases are gonna be the same size, so I'm just gonna say triangle. And it looks like, actually, kind of drew those upside down. Might be easier to do it this way. It's got a 90 degree angle. And um, we've got two of them, so rather than trying a second triangle, I'm just gonna say this triangle times two. So it's got a height of four, um, height of four, and it seems to have a base of three so if that's a 90 degree angle this one's kind of a hard one this is the the base right there i didn't do a very good job of trying that drawing that triangle but it's okay so this is going to be the two bases base times height divided by two because it is a triangle our base i'm going to go ahead and write it right over here our base is four our height is three. Now, if you said four times three or three times four, it doesn't matter because, you know, multiplication, order of multiplication doesn't matter. You're gonna divide it by two to find the area of the triangle, but then you multiply by two. And as many of you have figured out, you really can cancel those out. But let's go ahead and do 4.3 or four times three, which is 12. So you can say, oh, four times three is 12 divided by two is six. And then six times two is 12 again. So, you know, there's really no need to write all that. So all of that equals six. And six is for both bases. All right, now let's take a look at that. Again, we've got the one, we should have a, because it, if the base is a triangle, it should have three sides, three rectangular sides. So we need to draw three separate rectangles because one of these rectangles is gonna have a base of three, one of the rectangles has a base of four, and the other rectangle has a base of five. So I'm gonna draw three different rectangles. One has a base of three, one has a base of four, and one has a base of five because, and you can tell, because those are the sides of the triangles if you look at that. This is four, this is three, and this over here is five, you can tell because up, up there. Now, what would be the height of these rectangles? They all have the same height, and that height is this distance right here. This distance right here, what is it? Oh, it looks like it's five. That's nifty. So, this is gonna be five, and this is five, and this is also five. So, Area of all of these is base times height because they're all rectangles. So the base is three, the height is five, which means the area of this rectangle is 15. The base of this is four, the height is five, which means the area is 20. The base of this is five, the height is five, which means the area is 25. So now I have the area of all three side, all three rectangular faces and the two triangular bases, which is six. Remember, each side, each area is three and two of them is six. So I add them up, 25 plus 20 plus 15 plus six. Let's see, that's 45. 
50, 60, 66. So I should have an area, surface area of 66. And because it is in yards, that means our units are gonna be square yards or yard squared. Okay, so that's number 14. Let's go ahead and do number 15. I'm gonna turn this page upside down or number 16, more like it. So let's take a look at 16. 16 is an interesting one. It is a trapezoid, a trapezoid uh, prism. <clears throat> so I've got two trapezoid bases. This is number 16. So here's my trapezoid base, and I have two of them, so I'm just gonna write times two. Um, let's see, do we have, we have the bases. There are three, and seven is the long base, and three is the short base, so three and seven. And the height is 3.5. And that's all I need to find the area of the trapezoid. So area of a trapezoid is base one plus base two times the height divided by two. And let's see, base one and base two are three and seven. The height is 3.5. We need to divide it by two. Three plus seven is 10. You're gonna multiply that by 3.5, which is 35 and divide that by two. So if you, um, and ultimately you have to multiply by two anyways. So uh, let's see, 35 divided by two is 17.5. So you find out that this equals 17.5. That's just one trapezoid. But if you're gonna do two trapezoids, 17.5 times two is 35. So the area of both trapezoids is 35. Now, remember a prism is two bases connected by rectangles. So this, uh, if the prism, sorry, if uh, this base has four sides, that means we should have four rectangles, four different rectangles. And I'm not quite sure what we know about the rectangles so far. Well, if this is a base, then one of the rectangles is going to have a base of seven. The other rectangle should have a base of three. And now we need to figure out what the base of these side rectangles are. So let's take a look at these diagonal these uh, diagonal areas. Let's see if we could find it. Oh, there we go. One is four. And if this one is four, I believe we can assume in this case that the other one is also going to be four technically. Oh. Sorry, not four over there, but four over here, and that's four over there. Technically, I don't think we can assume that, but let's go ahead and just uh, keep working through it. So if that's the base of all of them, what's the height? Let's look at 16 again. The height is this, the line connecting the two bases. So if this is a base, the line connecting the two, and this is a base, the line connecting the bases, would be here, there's nothing there, here, there's nothing there, here, oh, there it is, 10. It's 10. So, line connecting the bases says it's 10, 10, 10, and 10. Base times height. What's nice with all of these is we know what seven times 10 is without a calculator, it's 70. All right, um, we know that this is three times 10, which is 30. This is four times 10, which is 40. This is four times 10 again, which is 40. Now I have the area of the four rectangular faces and the two bases. So it's 40 plus 40 plus 30 plus 70 plus 35. So uh, let's add it. Uh, this is 100, 140, 180, 180 plus 35. That sounds like it's 115. I believe so. So it should be a hundred. Actually, let's do a calculator or 215. So let's do that. 70 plus 30 plus 40 plus 40 plus 35. Yep, 215. It's always a good idea to check with the calculator. And the units are in meters. Nope, it's in miles, M-I. So it's miles squared. 
All right, so that's number 16. The last four questions, 17, 18, 19, and 20, those are, uh, they want us to uh, figure out whether it is a prism or a pyramid and what kind of prism or pyramid. So the first word is the name of the base. So let's take a look. We've got two bases, which means it is going to be some kind of prism. Go ahead and do that with both of them. Some kind of prism because it's got two bases and the base is a rectangle or a square. So you can call it a square or rectangle, rectangular, rectangular prism. In our second one, we've got, ooh, sides that come to a point and only one base. That means it's a pyramid of some kind. And because we've got one base with three sides, a three-sided figure is a triangle. So you would say a triangular pyramid. Our next one, a lot of people see triangles and they think, oh, it's a pyramid. That's not true. We, there is, um, it's hard to see in this, but there are actually two bases. Um, yeah, I didn't do a very good job of Oh, there it is, it's supposed to go like that. Um, but there are two bases, they're both triangles and they're connected by rectangles. So two bases means it's a prism connected by triangles, which means triangular prism. And finally, let's do the last one. We've got, it uh, looks like two bases, two triangles for bases, which means we have a prism of some kind and the base is a triangle. So we would say triangular prism. All right, so it looks like we did uh, a handful of problems. Um, go ahead and try the rest on your own. Good luck.